Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and today I'd like to pose the question, was dueling a major part of medieval culture? So, if you learned your medieval history primarily by watching Hollywood productions, you might think that everybody in the Middle Ages ran around strapped up with swords 24-7, and uh, that they would break into a sword fight at the earliest opportunity. But was that really the case? Yeah, there are a couple of other general points I want to make. And so I'm, I'm doing what I said I wouldn't do. I'm going to make broad generalizations. Uh, but I want to make two of them, and they're, they're kind of important. Point number one is that swords were not a fashion accessory during the Middle Ages. People didn't wear them 24-7 just to have them around. And there's a real good reason for this. They're not comfortable things to strap on your body, right? I mean, they tend to, tend to hitch in the leg. They bang into the furniture. Hard to sit in a chair with arms when you're wearing a sword. Hey, all that is a fact of life. And if we look at the Bayeux Tapestry, we can see that when people were at home, they didn't wear a sword. They wore a sword at specific times. If they were going to war, they wore swords and full armor, and off they went. But also if they were engaged in any sort of dangerous mission. It might be a police action. They might be going to pick up somebody that the Lord is interested in having a private conversation with, shall we say. Uh, or they may have to go and, and fight some householder, but not full-blown warfare. They just are going to go and intimidate them. And when they do that, they just wear plain old civvies. And they take their sword along, and they might take a shield. They might even take a spear. Uh, but they're not armored up. But if they're at home, having a banquet, walking around town, no sword. Uh, it just wasn't done. That, that really comes in more in the Renaissance, uh, up to the 18th century. Well, which is when we get a lot more class-based distinctions on swords as well. Okay, so swords, not for daily wear about the manor. The second thing I want to say, uh, and if, if you're a fan of shows like Game of Thrones or The Witcher or things like this, this might surprise you, but in the Middle Ages, there was no tradition of sword fight dueling. Okay, so it's not like D'Artagnan going up against uh, Cardinal Richelieu's guards. Right, that comes later. The, the Middle Ages really is not an era where you'd slap a guy in the face and face off. Nope, didn't happen. Now, not to say they didn't fight, they certainly did, and they even dueled, but but the way of it was quite different. And I'm going to explain that to you right now. To illustrate the fact that there didn't seem to be a dueling culture in the Middle Ages, I'm going to refer to uh, Geoffrey Chaucer's book, Canterbury Tales, and specifically to the Knight's Tale, because I think that's very illustrative. So here's how that goes. I'm not going to give you the whole thing, but because even Chaucer uses about three times as many words as he has to to get the story across. Uh, but here's the deal. We've got this guy, Theseus, uh, which a lot of you would pronounce it Theseus. I'm just going to say right up front that when I took ancient Greek history back when I was in college, and that was so long ago when I took it, they called it civics. But when I took ancient Greek history, I had a professor who pointed out to me uh, in no uncertain terms, that saying Theseus and Odysseus was just plain wrong. And the way he illustrated that is he said, you know who the father of the gods is, right? Zeus. Z-E-U-S. He said, you don't pronounce that Zeus, it's Zeus. And therefore, you don't pronounce Theseus, Theseus, it's Theseus and Odysseus. All right, so that's the way I've been pronouncing it for 40 years, and I really can't change now because he drilled that into my head. So anyway, so we got Theseus, and he is the Duke of Athens. 
And he goes and he kicks the crap out of the city of Thebes. And he makes uh, two of the Thebian royal family his prisoners. A guy named Arceta and another one named Palamon. They're cousins. They are best, best buddies. And they're up in prison. And they see, off in the distance one day, uh, this gal named Emily, who is the sister-in-law of Theseus. And they both fall madly in love with her at first sight to the extent that they want to kill each other because they're both in love with her. Absolutely crazy. So time goes by, I'm not going to tell you all the stuff, but they are out of prison. And one day, Arceta runs across Palamon hiding out in the woods. This is after he's busted out of prison. And uh, they get into a beef. They're beefing about Emily. Now mind you, neither one of them has ever even said hello to this woman. They have never even met her in person, but they are willing to kill each other for the love of her. Okay. So, Palamon uh, wants to get into it right there, but he's unarmed. And, and Arceta only has his dagger on. He was just out to go do some hunting. So he says to Palamon, he said, look, he said, let's do this the right way. I'll go home. I'll get all the weapons we need. I'll bring them over here. He said, you pick out what you want and I'll take the rest and then we'll fight for Emily's hand. And Palamon says, that sounds perfectly fine to me. So the next day, Arceta shows up. He doesn't have two swords. He doesn't have two swords and two bucklets. He has got the entire nine yards of knightly panoply. He's got Full armor, he's got swords, he's got lances, shields, whole nine yards. And they go at it like basically a mini tournament right there in the woods. Full blown battle. So it just so happens that Theseus, the Duke of Athens, is riding by and notices the commotion in his woods. So he and his men go and they break it up. He says, Whoa, 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 what are you doing? fighting in my woods. And Palamon and Arceta tell him that they're both in love with his sister-in-law, Emily, and they're going to try to kill each other to win her hand. Now, Theseus does not at this point say, what are you, nuts? You don't even know this woman. No. Nope. Not what he says at all. As a matter of fact, just the opposite. He is so impressed at their chivalric behavior that um, he thinks that that's just really cool, that he doesn't even want to put them back in prison anymore. Now he loves these guys, and he wants to help them out with their problem. But he says, look, he said, fighting us out in the woods over here all alone, he said, that's not going to get you anything. He said, Emily doesn't even know you're doing it. He said, so who's going to show up and say, hey, I killed my cousin for you, let's get married. He said, no, 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 that's no good. He said, we got to do this in public the right way. Okay. Now, he doesn't say, let's go back to the castle. We'll go in a courtyard. I'll give you a couple of swords. I'll invite Emily down and my wife to watch the fight. Have a glass of wine. Whoever wins gets Emily. No, that's not what he says. He says, here's what we're going to do. You guys are going to go away for a year, and you're going to get a hundred of your best friends each. And you're going to come back and we're going to have a tournament. And whatever side wins or whichever one of you guys gets killed, other guy gets Emily. Now, mind you, he hasn't ever even asked Emily about this, but he's sure that she's going to be fine with it. So off they go. And that's exactly what they do. So believe me, if they could have just had a sword fight, they would have had a sword fight, right? If that was the common thing. Uh, now, I'm not saying that having a full-blown tournament was the common thing, or that trying to kill each other for a girl you never even met is a common thing. I mean, that's typical chivalry BS, which Chaucer's audience would have known. But they would have raised the BS flag on practical things, like how they were going to go about killing each other, uh, if that was a thing. But, but it wasn't. 
And it's the same thing uh, with Henry Bolingbroke. I mean, he had a trial by combat, right, under Richard II, which Richard II stopped. But that wasn't just to hey, give those guys a pair of swords and let them go at it. No. I mean, they were going to start off jousting and then hack each other up uh, with swords eventually, wearing full armor. Because that's the way stuff was settled then. So no dueling culture. All right? I just want to make that really clear. There was a fighting culture, but there was not a sword fighting dueling culture. That comes with the Renaissance. Uh, primarily. Now I know there's long sword and sword and buckler fighting treatises because you had a fight, right? But that was not because there was a big dueling culture at the time. And in my humble opinion, just from the research that I'm doing, I'm not seeing a whole lot of dueling going on. Uh, you saw it in the Viking era, but even in the Viking era, the way they did a duel is they marked out a square you know, square on the ground, you challenged, you know, you challenged your opponent, and he showed up with his armor, sword, and three shields. <laughs> right? I mean, you had basically a little mini battle. You didn't have, uh, you know, a D'Artagnan type of duel. So, none of that in the Middle Ages. Right? Uh, so, that's kind of off the table as a reason to have a sword. Uh, but if you watch Game of Thrones or The Witcher, you'd think that's the whole reason to have a sword, but it's not. Even though I'm not going to say stand-up duels, just swords, never happened in the Middle Ages, uh, because it had to happen somewhere sometime. Right? But what I'm saying is that there was no real culture of dueling. There was a culture of fighting. And that was around warfare, and even duels were more in the nature of full-blown, full-armored combat, a little mini-battle, if you will, uh, instead of the Errol Flynn type of swashbuckling duels that we tend to think about. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Now, I hope, uh, I hope you all like this. It's a little bit different, I know. And originally, this was not going to be its own video. Uh, this is actually something I filmed for another video I'm working on. But that other video is going pretty long, and this was really not central to getting its point across. And I thought it was interesting enough to deserve a treatment of its own. So I hope you liked it. If you do, thumbs up, you know how to do it. If you didn't, thumbs down. That's good too, because I gotta know. And by all means, comment on it. Tell me uh, if you didn't like it. Tell me what you didn't like, because I can't make them better if I don't know what to fix. So that's a score there. And if you liked it, feel free to tell me that too, because I love to hear that stuff. I read every comment and I respond to as many of them as I have time for, which is generally quite a few, especially if you ask a question. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. We'd love to have you. There's some more sword content coming up and plenty of uh, muzzleloading content uh, coming up as well. So if you like that stuff, click the subscribe button. Come on on board. You can support us on Patreon if you'd like, but if you don't want to, that's perfectly okay. And you can see more good content on my website, mikebellevue.com. So until next week, bye.